Come on, Bill. We got some more material. What are you doing? Come on, Bill. I'm talking to you. Get ready for a journey through the Wild West. A land of gunfights, notorious outlaws, and legendary gun slingers. We'll get into the final moments of 10 legendary figures from this unforgettable era of American history. Number 10. Bat Masterson Bat Masterson was a true legend of the Wild West. He was a gambler, saloon keeper, lawman, and a newspaper man. He was no ordinary guy. Born as Bartholomew Masterson on November 26, 1853, in the quaint town of Henrysville, Quebec, Bat's early years were a mix of farm life and big family dynamics. He was the second of seven kids, each with their own story, no doubt. The Masterson family was on the move a lot, living in Quebec, New York, Illinois, and Missouri before finally planting roots near Wichita, Kansas. At 19, Bat's life took a turn for the adventurous. He left home to become a buffalo hunter and Indian scout in Dodge City, Kansas. This was the Wild West in all its glory, folks. But in January 1876, things got messy in Sweetwater, Texas. Bat found himself in a lethal squabble leaving a man and a dance hall girl dead. This ordeal sent him scurrying back to Dodge City. Dodge City was where Bat really made a name for himself. Over the next decade, he juggled roles as a Ford County Sheriff, Deputy U.S. Marshal, saloon keeper, and gambler. He was part of the local power clique known as The Gang, but Bat wasn't one to stay put. He made his way to other western towns, including a stint in Tombstone, Arizona, working alongside the legendary Wyatt Earp. A quick trivia, that was a huge fan of prize fighting. He was so into the sport that by the 1880s, he'd become a leading authority, witnessing almost every major match and title fight in the U.S. But the cowboy life was calling its last round for bat. In 1902, he headed to the bustling streets of New York City, swapping his gun belt for a pen. He spent the remaining years as a reporter and columnist for the Morning Telegram, covering not just sports, but offering his take on crime, politics, and other hot topics of the day. Bat's charm and wit weren't just for the readers, he was a close pal of President Theodore Roosevelt. He is one of the White House gunfighters who received federal appointments, a testament to his influence and connections. Sadly, in 1921, Bat died at his desk of a heart attack, bringing an end to his extraordinary journey. From the dusty trails of the West to the bustling streets of New York, Bat Masterson's life was nothing short of epic. So there you have it, the incredible tale of a man who lived on his own terms and left a mark on American history. Number 9. Jesse James Jesse Woodson James is a name that echoes through American history as a notorious outlaw and a figure shrouded in legend. Born on September 5, 1847 in Kearney, Missouri, Jesse's life was anything but ordinary. Jesse and his brother Frank weren't your typical outlaws. They came from a well-educated, respected family of farmers. Their dad, Reverend Robert James, was a Baptist minister who, along with their mother, Zerelda, moved from Kentucky to Missouri in 1842. But things took a dark turn in 1863 when Union soldiers brutally attacked their farm. At just 16, Jesse and Frank joined the Confederate guerrilla soldiers, teaming up with the likes of William Quantrill and the infamous Bloody Bill Anderson. Now there's a bit of debate among historians about the brothers. Some say they were pretty harsh to Union soldiers, while others think their tough experiences pushed them towards a life of crime. Either way, after the war, they felt wronged by the harsh laws and started taking matters into their own hands, robbing trains, stagecoaches, and banks linked to the North. Now, you might have heard stories of Jesse and Frank being like Robin Hood, stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. But let's be real, there's no real proof of that. Chances are they kept the loot for themselves. From 1860 to 1882, the James Gang was the most feared outlaw group in American history. 
pulling off more than 20 bank and train robberies and not shying away from taking out anyone who got in their way. They bagged an estimated $200,000, becoming legends, especially in Missouri, for their efforts to support the Confederate cause. One of their most notorious heists was on December 7, 1869, at a bank in Gallatin, Missouri. Jesse, thinking the banker was behind Bloody Bill's death, shot him dead. The newspapers went wild, calling the gang vicious and bloodthirsty, and suddenly, there were bounties on their heads. But here's where it gets really wild. On April 3, 1882, Jesse was just chilling at home, straightening a picture on his wall, when Bob Ford, a member of his own gang, shot him in the back of the head. Just like that, Jesse was gone at 34. The way he was taken out caused a huge uproar in Missouri. People saw it as a cowardly assassination. Frank surrendered a few months later, but he got off pretty easy since the evidence was slim and he went back to living a quiet life. And that's the whirlwind story of Jesse James, folks. A man who lived and died by the gun, leaving a legacy that's still talked about today. Number 8. Calamity Jane Now let's talk about one heck of a wild character from the American frontier, Martha Jane Canary. But you probably know her as Calamity Jane. She was a frontiers woman, a sharpshooter, and boy, could she spin a tail. Calamity Jane was not just famous for her adventures. She was buddies with the legendary Wild Bill Hickok and even shared in Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. But here's the kicker. Despite her daredevil lifestyle, Jane had a huge heart, especially for those who were sick or in need. Oh, and she totally rocked men's clothing like a boss. Now, her life story sounds like something straight out of a movie. She hit the Wild West in a wagon train as a kid, but tragedy struck when she lost both her parents, leaving her to fend for herself. She did all sorts of jobs, from cooking to being a dance hall girl, you name it. By 1876, she found herself in Deadwood, South Dakota, where she started hauling goods and machinery as a bullwhacker. It's around this time she probably met Hickok, although their friendship was short-lived since he was shot dead not long after. There are all sorts of rumors about her and Hickok, even tales about a secret marriage and a kid, but who knows what's true, right? Regardless, by the late 1870s, Calamity Jane was a celebrity in Deadwood with magazine writers all over her wild stories. Fast forward to 1891, Jane married Clinton Burke after living with him for seven years. She joined Wild West shows, traveling around the Midwest and even showing up in the 1901 Pan American Exposition in New York. But things got rough. She struggled with alcoholism and ended up back in Deadwood, living in poverty. In her final days, Jane was back in the Black Hills, helping out Madame Dora Dufran by cooking and doing laundry. In July 1903, after a heavy drinking spree on a train, she fell ill and sadly passed away on August 1st from inflammation of the bowels and pneumonia. She was buried right next to Hickok in Deadwood. Calamity Jane's life was a wild ride filled with ups and downs, legends, and hard truths. Number 7. Billy the Kid Billy the Kid was also known as Henry McCarty or William H. Bonney. If you didn't know, his life reads like an old western movie, so let's get into it. Born in New York City to Irish Catholic parents in 1859, Billy's exact birthday is a bit of a mystery. It could be September 17th or November 23rd. Nobody's really sure. He was baptized Patrick Henry McCarthy and he had a younger brother named Joseph, born in 1863. Now, Billy the Kid wasn't just some cowboy. He was an infamous outlaw and gunfighter, rumored to have taken down 21 men by the time he was just 21 years old. He was smack in the middle of New Mexico's Lincoln County War, where he supposedly committed three murders. Life got tough for Billy early on. He became an orphan at 15 and got into trouble for stealing food at 16. Shortly after, he was caught robbing a Chinese laundry, got arrested, but then, bam, he escaped. He fled to Arizona, becoming an outlaw and a federal fugitive. By 1877, he was calling himself William H. Bonney. 
Things escalated when Billy killed a blacksmith in an altercation in Arizona. He became a wanted man and hightailed it back to New Mexico, where he joined a group of cattle rustlers. Billy really made a name for himself when he joined the Regulators and got involved in the Lincoln County War of 1878. He ended up being charged with the murders of three men, including the local sheriff. Billy's fame, or infamy, skyrocketed in December 1880 when newspapers in New Mexico and New York started writing about his crimes. Sheriff Pat Garrett nabbed him later that month. In 1881, Billy was tried and convicted of murder and was sentenced to hang. But get this, he escaped jail by killing two deputies. He was on the run for over two months until Garrett tracked him down and shot him in Fort Sumner in July 1881, ending the legend of Billy the Kid at just 21 years old. Number 6. Wild Bill Hickok Wild Bill Hickok was a real-life action hero of the American Old West. Picture this, a soldier, scout, lawman, and yes, even a cattle rustler. Wild Bill was the quintessential gunslinger and gambler, living life on the edge in a world where shootouts were just another Tuesday. Wild Bill's story sounds like something out of a Hollywood movie, right? Well, he was a bit of a showman himself, often stretching the truth to make his tales more exciting. He was like that friend who always has an unbelievable story to share, except his stories became the stuff of legend. Born on an Illinois farm, Wild Bill didn't stick to plowing fields. At 18, he was already living life on the run, eventually becoming a stagecoach driver and then a lawman in the wild territories of Kansas and Nebraska. During the Civil War, he was a spy and soldier for the Union Army. After the war, he kept busy as a scout marksman, actor, and of course, a professional gambler. While Bill's life was a series of adventures and gunfights, his most famous and final moment came in 1876 in a Deadwood saloon, where he was shot by Jack McCall while playing poker. The cards in his hand at the time, the infamous Dead Man's Hand, Black Aces and Eights. Now, while Bill is a staple of frontier history, He's been immortalized in films, books, and TV shows. But here's the thing. Separating fact from fiction in Wild Bill's life is a challenge. He's often portrayed as a hero, but historical accounts vary, and many of his alleged exploits were exaggerated, sometimes by Wild Bill himself. In reality, according to his biographer, his career as a gunfighter was relatively short, and he likely had only six or seven actual gunfights. So, what's the real story of Wild Bill Hickok? He was a man of his time, living in a lawless and wild era, making a name for himself in ways that captured the imagination of people then and now. Whether hero or showman, he remains an iconic figure of the Wild West. Number 5. Buffalo Bill Cody Let me tell you about Buffalo Bill, a real legend of the American West. Born on February 26, 1846 in Iowa, he had quite the life before he passed away in Denver on January 10, 1917. Buffalo Bill was a jack of all trades, hunting buffalo, scouting for the U.S. Army, riding for the Pony Express, fighting against Native Americans, and even acting. But what really made him famous was his Wild West show. It was a big hit mixing real-life experiences with a bit of showbiz, and it turned him into one of the first worldwide celebrities. Bill's life was tough from the start. His dad, Isaac, moved the family from their farm in Iowa to Kansas. Things were pretty heated in Kansas back then, when people fighting over slavery, Isaac was against slavery and got stabbed while giving a speech. He died from those wounds in 1857. To help the family, Bill started working super young. At just nine years old, he worked for a freight company using his skills as a horseman. Now, about his time with the Pony Express, it's a bit of a mystery. Official records don't mention him, but there's plenty of evidence, including his own words that he rode for them. He was only 14 when he started in 1860. He'd already been delivering messages for the same company, so they knew he was good with horses. They started him off with a relatively short route, just 45 miles, but it was the beginning of his adventures. 
Buffalo Bill's life was like a roller coaster during the American Civil War from 1861 to 1865. First, he was a Union scout fighting against tribes like the Kiowa and Comanche. Then in 1863, he joined the 7th Kansas Cavalry, getting into the thick of things in Missouri and Tennessee. After the war, he didn't slow down. He worked as a scout and dispatch bearer for the U.S. Army in Kansas around 1866 and 1867. But here's where it gets wild. From 1867 to 1868, he was hunting buffalo to feed workers building the Union Pacific Railroad. He became a buffalo hunter machine, taking down about 4,280 of them. This earned him a rep as the top buffalo killer in the Great Plains. Newspapers and dime novel writers loved these stories. They turned Bill into a Western legend. Writers like Ned Buntline and Prentice Ingram pumped out tales that made him larger than life. Then in 1872, Cody got into showbiz. He starred in Buntline's play, The Scouts of the Prairie. Sure, his acting wasn't top notch, but he knew how to put on a show. For 45 years, he wowed crowds as an entertainer. Bill kept up with his Wild West show until 1916, even when he was 71 and needed help getting on his horse. The show was a hit both in the U.S. and internationally. But despite its success, Bill's finances took a hit due to some bad investments, like a dud gold mine. He lost a lot of the money he made in entertainment. His last public appearance was just two months before he died, ending a truly epic chapter in American history. Number 4. Bell Star Let me tell you about Bell Star, a real wild figure from the Old West. Born Myra Maybell Shirley on February 5, 1848, near Carthage, Missouri, her life was nothing short of a roller coaster. Her dad, John R. Shirley, was a farmer who later ran an inn, and her mom, Eliza Hatfield Shirley, was tied to the notorious Hatfields of the Hatfield-McCoy feud fame. In 1866, she tied the knot with a guy she knew from childhood, James C. Reed. They had two kids, Rosie Lee Pearl and James Edwin Eddy. James tried his hand at farming but soon got mixed up with the Star Clan notorious outlaws. They were into all sorts of shady stuff, horse stealing, cattle rustling, and whiskey bootlegging. By 1874, James was wanted for robbery, and Bell was accused of helping him. They bolted to Texas, but James was killed while trying to dodge the law. Bell didn't slow down. She joined the Star Clan, marrying one of them, Samuel Starr, in 1880. That's when she started calling herself Bell. They supposedly covered for bootleggers and hid fugitives. This caught the eye of Judge Isaac Partner, the hanging judge, famous for his harsh sentences. In 1882, Bell and Sam got nabbed for horse theft. Even though they were sentenced to a year in prison, they got out in nine months for good behavior. After Sam was killed in a gunfight in 1886, Bell shacked up with his relative, Jim July Starr, under Cherokee law. This might have been to keep her land. Initially, she was always a suspect when livestock went missing or fugitives were around, but she never got convicted again. Bell mellowed out, saying her place was off limits to criminals and even helped her sick neighbors. But Bell's wildlife ended dramatically. She was shot in the back returning from a store to her ranch on February 3, 1889. The mystery of who did it remains unsolved. The suspect? a rival outlaw, an ex-lover, her husband, even her own son. But the true identity of Bell Star's killer remains one of those Old West mysteries. Number 3. Annie Oakley Alright, now let's dive into the life of Annie Oakley. She was one of the coolest sharpshooters in American history. Born on August 13, 1860 in Ohio, Annie became a legend in Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, where she was known as Little Sure Shot. Annie, whose real name was Phoebe Ann Mosey, or Moses depending on who you ask, was a natural with a gun. As a kid, she was so good at hunting that she could sell her game in Cincinnati and make enough money to pay off her family's farm mortgage. Talk about a young entrepreneur! But here's where it gets really interesting. 
When she was just 15, she beat Frank E. Butler, a well-known vaudeville marksman, in a shooting match in Cincinnati. Sparks flew, and they ended up getting married, probably around 1876. For a while, they toured vaudeville circuits and circuses as Butler and Oakley. By the way, she probably picked the name Oakley from a suburb in Cincinnati. In April 1885, Annie, now managed by her husband, joined Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West show. She was introduced as Miss Annie Oakley, the peerless lady wing shot. Let me tell you, she was a hit. Annie was one of the main attractions for 16 years, except for a short stint in 1887 with Pawnee Bill's Frontier Exhibition. Annie's skills were out of this world. Imagine this. She could split a playing card edge on from 30 paces away. She didn't stop there. She'd shoot dimes tossed in the air and even shot cigarettes from her husband's lips. But here's a cool bit of trivia for you. You know those punch complimentary tickets? They're sometimes called Annie Oakley's because of her insane trick where she'd blast a playing card full of holes before it even hit the ground. Annie wasn't just big in the States. She was a massive hit in Europe, too. In 1887, she even met Queen Victoria. Talk about royal approval. And get this, in Berlin, she performed her cigarette trick with none other than Crown Prince Wilhelm, who later became Kaiser Wilhelm II. He insisted on holding the cigarette himself. But life threw a curveball at Annie in 1901 with a nasty train wreck that left her partially paralyzed. But true to her indomitable spirit, she fought back, recovered, and was back on stage before you knew it, continuing to dazzle crowds for years. Her story isn't just about being a sharpshooter, it's about resilience, talent, and breaking boundaries. She was a true icon of her time. Number 2. Butch Cassidy Butch Cassidy was the infamous American outlaw and the brains behind the Wild Bunch gang. Born on April 13, 1866 in Utah, Butch's life was like something straight out of a Western movie. So Butch, whose real name was Robert Parker, picked up the name Cassidy from Mike Cassidy, a seasoned outlaw who taught him all about cattle rustling and gunslinging between 1884 and 1887. Butch wasn't just about the outlaw life, he did some cowboying between 1891 and 1892, and even spent a couple of years in Wyoming State Prison. His partner in crime? L.Z. Lay. Together, they sometimes alone, sometimes with a gang, robbed trains, banks, paymasters, and even dabbled in horse and cattle rustling. But after L.Z. got caught in 1899, Butch teamed up with the legendary Sundance Kid, and oh boy, did they make a pair. As the heat from sheriffs and Pinkerton detectives turned up, Butch, Sundance, and Sundance's girlfriend, Etta Place, hightailed it to South America in 1901. While Etta headed back home in 1907, Butch and Sundance kept the adrenaline pumping by owning a ranch in Argentina and, of course, slipping back into their outlaw ways. Their wild run supposedly ended in 1909 in Bolivia, where a showdown with soldiers left Sundance fatally shot and Butch, well, he allegedly took his own life. But wait, there's more! Some say they actually met their end in Uruguay during a bank robbery in 1911. And then there are tales of Butch sneaking back to the States living under the radar until dying quietly in the 1930s. Butch Cassidy's life is a maze of adventures, mysteries, and legends. His stories got everything, thrilling heists, daring escapes, and an ending shrouded in mystery. If you're into stories of outlaws and wild, wild west escapades, drop a like, share, and hit subscribe. There's more where this came from. Number 1. Doc Holliday And now let's dive into the wild, wild life of Doc Holliday, the dentist-turned-gambler and gunfighter. You might know him best for his role in the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral alongside his buddy Wyatt Earp. But get this, despite the legends, he probably only took down one to three guys, not the dozen some stories claim. Doc Holliday's life is like something straight out of a Hollywood movie, and guess what? It actually inspired a bunch of them. Doc wasn't always about guns and gambling. At 21, he was a fresh dental graduate from the Pennsylvania College of Dental Surgery. 
He set up a dental practice in Georgia, but life threw him a curveball. He got tuberculosis, the same disease that took his mom when he was 15. Looking for a change of scenery for his health, he headed to the Southwest and turned to gambling, a pretty respectable job back then in Arizona. Doc's life was like a constant adventure. He saved Wyatt Earp's life in a saloon scrap in Texas, and they became fast friends. Together, they traveled through New Mexico and Arizona, eventually landing in Tombstone. There, the local outlaw gang, the Cochise County Cowboys, kept messing with him, even accusing him of a stagecoach robbery. Then came the big day, October 26, 1881. Doc was deputized by Tombstone's Marshal, Virgil Earp, and they tried to disarm five cowboys, leading to the legendary OK Corral shootout. Things got messy in Tombstone after that. Virgil was maimed, Morgan Earp was killed, and justice seemed out of reach. So Wyatt Earp, now a deputy U.S. Marshal, formed a posse, including Doc. They went after the cowboys they believed were responsible, leading to a series of confrontations and killings. As things heated up, a warrant was out for Doc and the posse, but they kept on eventually heading to New Mexico. Wyatt Earp pulled some strings to keep Doc from being extradited. Sadly, Doc's health declined and he spent his last years in Colorado, passing away at 36 in the Hotel Glenwood from tuberculosis. Doc Holliday's life was a mix of tragedy, bravery, and legend a dentist turned legendary figure of the Wild West. His story is a reminder of how unpredictable and fascinating history can be. And there you have it, folks, the tales of 10 legendary figures who carved their names into the rugged landscape of the Wild West, only to meet their end in ways as dramatic as their lives. From showdowns under the blazing sun to mysterious circumstances shrouded in whispers, their stories have traveled through time, reminding us of an era both wild and untamed. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.